Welcome to Endoscopy on Air 2020. Watch Amrita Sethi in performing EUS guided local therapy of pancreatic neuroendocrine tumor. So today we are going to do our at least attempt endoscopic ultrasound radio frequency ablation. This is a neuroendocrine tumor. This is a gentleman with multiple liver lesions as well as multiple pancreatic lesions for the past two years who has remained stable on chemotherapy. However, his most recent scan showed increase in size of a head lesion that also started to develop a biliary obstruction. He's previously been stented and now we are going to perform ablation. The thought by his physicians and the patient himself was to try to avoid a Whipple procedure and the associated comorbidities. So we have here a Taiwu EUS RA probe. It is similar to an EUS needle. I will show the, a picture of the electrode after the procedure. But just to show the setup a little bit, um, it has a proprietary generator. This is monopolar energy. There's two grounding pads on the patient. The needle is connected to the generator. It is also connected to an irrigation system. So the needle is going to be continuously bathed in saline in order to allow for the cooling during the actual ablation and prevent sticking of tissue to the needle and will allow for more continuous uh, treatment. There's three different sizes of needles um, and we choose the size based on the size of the lesion. We've measured this lesion to be about two centimeters by three centimeters and therefore we are going to um, choose a, a, a 10 millimeter probe. The size of the probe determines the amount of energy that we will use and the timing of the actual treatment. So here on the generator is where we set our, have our setting. We are on a continuous mode and with a 10 millimeter probe, we will do 30 watts of energy and for 20 seconds. We also have an impedance monitor. We are trying to achieve an impedance of 800 ohms. If we do not reach this, it might suggest that there is a degree of heat sink. So now I am going to try to enter the lesion with the probe itself. You see the metal stent um, up above. This is a stainless steel catheter, which means that it is very stiff compared to an EUS needle. So the one difficulty is in determining, is in positioning, but you can see the needle entering the mass there. So the relatively hypoechoic area is the electrode. That's 10 millimeters. And I will place this into the or into the center of the lesion there. If it's possible to do two applications, that would be ideal. However, in this situation, the positioning is difficult. The area of effect of the treatment is about nine millimeters, a little bit less, by 15. Um, so placing it here, we'll be able to treat a portion of this lesion. So now we're ready to go. Our irrigation is running. And I'm going to press the pedal, which will start the actual ablation. So I started the ablation, and we are looking at the timer, and we are looking at the impedance. And um, we should see some bubbling soon of tissue. There you can see. You see the hyperechoic bubbling that's occurring? This reflects treatment, ongoing treatment. Okay, okay. And can you tell me how to determine the completeness of uh, tumor? Uh, when do we need to stop procedure? So we just stopped. I stopped because we reached about 30 seconds. It does have an automatic. 
brake cut off. But if that does not turn off, it means the impedance has not been reached. So I just turned it off because we reached our time limit. And so now I will come up with the catheter and I will actually try another treatment just at the top edge here. Okay. Okay, so okay. Start it again. This will be another 20 seconds. There you can see the bubbling. So the ablation is ongoing. You see that? So there's uh, not very much data, but the largest series is by Mark Bartes group of 12 patients that shows 85% efficacy. Um, with these tumors. This is a non-functional tumor. Um, so in terms of measuring efficacy of this treatment, we will basically, in this patient, look for lack of progression of his tumor. So now I have treated the areas that I can access, so I'm going to come out with the needle. Okay, so that is this case. Since this patient does have an indwelling um, biliary stent, we will exchange the stent out. My team will exchange the stent out and just clean the duct. Interestingly, we did talk to the patient that at another time we might also consider biliary, uh, biliary ablation with an intraductal RFA catheter as well. Here you see the follow-up information of the patient who did well. This slide shows the instrument and devices used. And finally, this is Amrita Seti's recommended reading.